Or plunging my blade deep into your heart. Take my heart. It belongs to you anyway. Do you always have to have a line at the ready? What is up, you guys? I'm Lucas Sullivan, and I'm joined by Ashley Reed. Hello. And we are here to talk about Assassin's Creed Chronicles India. It's a mouthful, right? It is. Now, explain to me, Ashley, what is this exactly? Is it DLC or an expansion? It's part of a mini-series called Assassin's Creed Chronicles, and there's going to be three entries. There's already been Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, this is Assassin's Creed Chronicles India, and there will be Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia. Uh, China was a DLC that was added on to Unity, but that was just sort of a, a marketing thing. They're not meant to be DLC. Okay, cool. So what's the story with India? I mean, obviously it takes place there, but what exactly are you doing? Um, that's honestly a bit hard to say. Well, it's actually very easy to say. You are trying to find the artifact of the week in colonial India, which... That's pretty much all there is to it. It's pretty sparse on story, just like the last one was. You're just running around from place to place trying to catch this jewel, and you get to see a whole bunch of the beautiful Indian city in while you're doing that. So that's pretty much the draw as far as story goes. It doesn't get much more complex than that. And uh, what is it like in terms of just the environments? They're absolutely beautiful. That was one of the things that worked really well in the last Assassin's Creed Chronicles, and it works really well here as well. It has sort of an, I guess you would call it an Indian theme. It uses uh, henna-inspired graphics on the backdrops and in the cutscenes, and it just looks so gorgeous. It's so, very, it's so colorful. It's so well designed. So it's really fun to look at what you're, look at the environment as you're exploring it. Right on. So I guess the question is, like, how well does this adapt the mainstays of Assassin's Creed? And I guess I'll start out with, how does the parkour work in 2D? It depends on the level with this one. You have both stealth sections and timed sections that allow a great range of movement. You can whistle at this window, the guard moves, and you sneak in the other window and grab something and run away. Or, you're, or you vault over obstacles and through this collapsing cave. Cave. So it works really well when it wants you to keep moving. But then there are sections where it kind of just throws roadblocks in the way almost to make the game longer. Like in time sections, you'll have to wait for huge platforms to move up and down really slowly. Or in stealth sections, it'll be set up so that there's only one path you can really go down and the guards are... The guards are very purposefully taking their time moving out of the way. So when it gets to that point, it's kind of eh, like you lose a lot of that momentum that you usually get in Assassin's Creed games. So that's unfortunate, but there are situations where it works well. It's just kind of a toss up where you're going to get that. So overall, is the stealth just not as satisfying here? It d again, it depends on what it lets you do, because it re this really wants to be a stealth game. It wants to be the most stealth Assassin's Creed game I've ever seen, at least. It actually, makes, it actually punishes you for engaging in combat, because in order to progress in the game, you need to get high scores, because that's the only way you can level up and get necessary upgrades. But you only get a high score in one of three stealth categories if you have a perfect assassination record, a perfect knockout record, or just no, you never engage with anyone and you're a shadow. If you ever get into a fight, you get knocked down to the lowest score possible in one of those categories. So it actively dis tries to dissuade you from getting into combat, but then it kind of gets confused and decides to throw some combat scenarios in there. You're like, why am I doing this now? Why are you making me do this now? You said this was bad. So it wants to be very stealthy and it focuses on that a lot but it kind of hurts itself by not really knowing where it wants to go. Hmm. Sounds frustrating. It is pretty frustrating. So how does it compare overall to Assassin's Creed Chronicles China? I feel like the controls are improved a little bit here. I didn't run into as many glitches as I did with Chronicles China, where I, I remember I was being chased by fire and got stuck and couldn't climb from the ceiling to the wall because the game refused to let her move. I didn't run into that kind of stuff in India, which was really nice. Unfortunately, 
there is a lot, there's a lot more bottlenecks in this. There's a lot more trying to slow you down. And I feel like there's a lot less story value. Like Chronicles China didn't have a lot of story, but I feel like India has even less. You could almost miss it if you don't really care for the format. So I feel like overall Chronicles China is the better game. So would you recommend this game to only Assassin's Creed hardcore fans like yourself? I would recommend it mostly to hardcore Assassin's Creed fans, maybe hardcore stealth fans if you really want just a quick a quick little something reminiscent of Mark of the Ninja. And you've already played Chronicles China. Cool. And what score did you give it? I gave Assassin's Creed Chronicles India a 2.5 out of 5. Well, thank you, Ashley. If you want to read her full review of Assassin's Creed Chronicles India, be sure to go to gamesradar.com and check out our YouTube page for more reviews. 